Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts, back with part two of my Tamiya Sand Scorcher Ultimate Build. I am having so much fun with this thing. It is just cute as heck and going together really well. This uh, issue, I'm going to do a lot of work on the body, get the inner fender wells in, and uh, do some more chassis work, show you what the interior is going to look like. So let's get started. You can see here I've mounted some blue tape just so I have something to write on. These bodies don't take pencil lead real well. So what I need to do is when this is slid too far forward it slopes down, slid back it slopes up. So I need to get it forward and aft until it's level. So I'm using the bottom here as my reference and I'll just set a level on this. And I'll get down here and just... And I already checked the level of the bench and it's level. So there is level with the bottom. So I will just... Draw a couple lines in the center. Flip it around and do the same thing. And then uh, center it side to side and punch some holes in it. There's my drilled holes in my rack. It's nice and level, turned out fine. Uh, before I get ready to primer and paint this body, I've got a couple other things. There's a few body details. These rear lights, this license plate light bracket, the sunroof, and uh, the original rear tail lights on the Baja Bug were solid, but to me it now includes a clear lens but you've got to cut this off. So, Also, I want to cut out the side windows and uh, I'll put netting in the side windows but I want the, the back windows in so I'm going to have to do a little work on this. And uh, The sunroof I'll probably put in a semi propped up position and the nose I'll get put on and glue it so it's solid so when I paint everything comes out nicely. As I mentioned, I've got these things to trim. So I'm going to show you a few uh, tips on doing that. For the windows, I, I just cut this part out, drops in here, and uh, I'm going to leave the wing window in. So I will just trace around here, like that, on both sides, holding it up firmly so it's in the right place and I'm going to cut around those. I'll, I haven't figured out exactly the best way to do it. I'll probably cut it completely across the bottom and I may glue a piece of plastic across there later to strengthen it but it's pretty strong up here on the sides. So we'll cut those out. Then what I'm going to do is mark these horrible mold lines here. And I like to mark them with a sharpie. I think I've shown this before because when I'm wet sanding it you, they disappear. So if the sharpie marks are there I can see where the mold lines are to clean them up. So my good old sharpie comes to the rescue. I, I sanded around here, I sanded the edges of the, of the uh, sunroof. I'll probably pop it up something about like that and glue it in. I can't have it too far open because of the roof rack. I usually clean these up just with a knife and start scraping them. These are really, really big uh, mold lines, so I'm going to take some scraping and sanding and wet sanding uh, until all the black is gone. So I'm going to go to work on those off camera. I'll figure out the best way to cut that. And these tail lights, <laughs> only way I can figure to do it is to either cut around them with a knife or maybe take a Dremel and cut the center out. So I forgot the best method for that too. It's my window. <clears throat> I was able to cut out one side here. And 
and it looks great. My wing window is still in, the back window is still in, um, and it, it works fine. I was able to keep a bridge across the bottom, which makes it very sturdy. This plastic, the clear plastic, is really brittle, so you have to be careful. I used a Dremel tool with a little saw blade on it, and uh, it cuts through this stuff real well. So I cut all four sides and then I just cleaned up the edges with an X-Acto knife and a, a uh, one of my wife's fingernail files which I borrowed. So I'm going to finish cutting this other side and the glass will be done. I just worked over these rear lights. Basically I just cut off the extended white part until it was flush with the outer ridge and then just sanded it flat. And the light lens just fits on there quite nicely. So those are going to be great for my lighting. That entails cutting off the mounting pin so you can't use the screw to mount it anymore but they glue will glue on just fine like this and then I will make a little backer plate for the LEDs. I'll show that when it's time to do it. Um, I just routed out the hole by putting a pencil line on there and just taking an X-Acto knife and started cutting. And it just takes a few minutes to cut the oval shape out. Also, it's important to note that these are not the same one side to the other. If you put them on wrong, they line up like this. So you want to make sure that you get the correct side on. So they'll be straight. So I will glue those on and uh, when I sand the body I'll sand those right in make sure everything's filled and those will be part of the body. The lighting lenses will be later. The license plate frame since it screws on I will add it after the body's painted and I'll paint it separately. Just finishing up a few body details here so I can paint it. Um, I added a couple of tabs I made to the back side of this roof, so it gives it a nice open angle, and I will paint this as a separate part. I did uh, bolt the front end on, I glued on the rear tail light holders, sanded off the mold marks. So the body is pretty much ready. I will uh, wash it in soap and water, do a little wet sanding on it, and then we'll start laying some primer on it. I did leave off the license plate light cover because it bolts on, so I'll paint that as a separate part. Um, and that way I can be painting the body while I'm working on other things. So, a couple of the other things I've got to work on. Um, I just got in a few new items. These are uh, some one-tenth scale seats I bought off of eBay. <laughs> They're really pretty good looking. Uh, I've been playing with them a little bit. The uh, location and everything is going to be approximately here. About a half an inch up off the floor. And I actually have enough room in here to put both of the seats so they will sit in this area and I will manufacture a, a full width base for them. I'll cover this servo with some plastic. My driver figure will will sit in the seat here work on her later. So those seats are really nice. I was, I was pleased when I got them in. They were ten dollars for two of them. They're made out of a rubber. They're kind of soft. Um, and solid, so they'll, they'll be great. Um, I also bought from the same seller on eBay these seat belts, which are beautiful, photo etched buckles and parts. Um, take it over this here. 
These will look really nice. I'm going to have a driver figure, but I will only have the, the seat belts on the other seat. So there's the seat belts. Those are going to look really good. And uh, we'll, we'll get those organized, and I'll show you how I'm going to fit those in. And then the third thing I got from the same eBay seller was this beautiful metal steering wheel. It's all metal, metal shaft, nice and heavy, but it really has a long shaft because the steering wheel is going to sit somewhere in here, and I'll build a dash for the, the body, but it needed a long shaft, and I like the looks of this one. It was a deep dish, pretty small. So those are some parts I just got in, and uh, we'll start integrating those into the build. So, while I wash the body and let it dry, I will start working on the shocks. You see I removed the shock. It just had a, a bolt in the bottom that held it on and a bolt on the top. So here's the new shock body. Three parts, top and bottom caps. And we're going to use, they give you a, a tall and a short shock bottom, so we're going to use the short one. And they give you spacers with three, two, or one holes. So we're going to use the two hole spacer. Got the shaft, I already put one little snap ring on it. We need this bottom shot cap. And then they give you two different lengths of springs a short spring and a long spring. The short spring is stiffer. We're going to use the long one. So, very simple um, to build, build these shocks. There's a couple of O-rings that fit in the bottom here. And the bottom cap goes on. Until it's all the way down. The valve that you've selected goes on with a snap ring. See if I can do this with any kind of delicacy here. We need a spacer so we get the correct length. We're going to use the number seven spacer. Nope, we're going to use the number three spacer. Just check here. Yeah, we're going to use a number three spacer. That limits the travel for our... Doesn't, doesn't, isn't too long. Okay, well, we got lots of loot in there now. See, I, uh, I don't do everything perfect the first time. A lot of times I just edit it out. Okay, so we'll fill that up. Just bubbles out of there. This little cap goes on. And the top screws on. All right, so there's our shock. Shock bottom, the little the short one just screws on. You've got to hold this with a pair of pliers to screw it all the way on. Oh yeah, it feels good. Spring goes on, and then this little spring retainer slides over the shaft. And there we have our shock with very nice action. Okay, it mounts a little differently than uh, the shock we took off. So I'll show that real quick. The shock before just had a bolt through the bottom. And it just sat over this. So on the top, they give you a, a selection of little spacers. We're going to use this one with the thin, the thin collar right there. back on. We'll just 
it down there loosely now to hold it. And then on the bottom, we're going to use a, uh, a little ball link. And the bottom of the shock is just going to snap onto that. Throw a little Loctite on this. Okay, there we go. Tighten up that top nut. Okay, very nice action. Now, um, these shocks also come with various thicknesses of spacers that you can use to make the shocks stiffer. We'll pull out this. Too. You can even stack them. So you just pull the spring down, and that gives it a stiffer suspension. We'll put those on both sides. There we go. Get the tires and wheels back. I got a few other things to show you on the chassis here. One last little detail on the chassis that's easy to miss is this protector for the wires here. You just take one of these little boots they give you and slice it in half, fit it over the wire, and then just tuck it in here. And that just is a extra seal to keep junk out of your motor. Okay, um, my suspension's all done, chassis turned out great. Uh, I showed you some of the things I'm going to do inside. Um, next, I've got to fit these inner wheel wells that will finish off inside of these. So I think these are going to take some uh, some doing. I'll probably fiddle with one set and then show you what I've done when I finish that. And then I'll start working on painting the body. Prepping these uh, inner fender wells, I'm using a pair of curved tip Lexan scissors. You can see I already cut this first one out uh, roughly and I stuck it in with a couple pieces of double stick tape just to see how it fit. But these scissors um, work really good on this thick material. So it's just leave enough of a flange here to glue it on. I'm going to use um, epoxy mixed with floxed cotton. I think I'll probably show that because it's kind of an unusual technique but very strong. So this is molded in some cut lines and I just worked it over a little bit at a time until I got what I wanted. These are really nice pieces that this uh, gentleman in England produces. Um, they're on eBay. Uh, there aren't any on there right now as I look, but I will try and find a link and put it on there. So if he picks them back up, you can see that just fits in here. And it'll require some trimming up in here still. 
So I'll get that trimmed up. But um, since I did put this first one in, let's see what that looks like here. There we go. So you can see, well, I don't know if you can see good up in here or not, but it produces a nice little inner well. The other side has no well, it's all open, so dirt and gunk can just fly right up into your car. This uh, will keep a lot of debris out, and they're both front and rear. So I will get those trimmed up and show you how I glue them in. I've got my wheel wells all trimmed and I test fit them and they all fit fine. I sanded the edges with uh, like 120 grit sandpaper and sanded the inside of the body. So here I've got my uh, 30 minute epoxy. I'm going to use the slow epoxy so I have some more working time. This little rack is from Tailspin Models and I love this thing because it holds the bottles upside down. So you don't have to wait for the slow epoxy to run through. I got a couple pieces of cardboard to mix epoxy on. Some popsicle sticks. And then this is flocked cotton. It's called Flox. It's basically shredded cotton and it makes the epoxy stronger and uh, extends the life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some epoxy up here. Good, 50-50 mix. Popsicle stick, do a little mixing. Okay, so 30 minutes, I've got pretty good working time on this. It's uh, late in the evening now, so I'm gonna get these glued on and let them dry till morning. So now all I'm gonna do is add some flock cotton to it and just mix it in. You'll kind of see what happens here. Turns this stuff into a nice paste. And I can mix in as much as I want. I'm going to get it to a consistency that's kind of putty-like. They make little strings in the epoxy that really bind it together. and. Uh, When it dries, it's hard as a rock. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll do this spender well here. Get some of this epoxy on it. Okay, and this one just sticks in right here, like that. Notice I have rubber gloves on too. This stuff gets on your hands, it does not want to come off too easy. in there. Just do a little bit of a filler. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to, before it hardens, I'm going to take a, a fingertip dipped in a little rubbing alcohol to smooth that and it'll just save me some sanding when it's done. So I'm going to glue the rest of those in. We'll let that dry overnight and see how it turns out. I uh, got my inner fender wells glued in 
and they turned out just beautiful. They're solid as heck. I took my uh, Dremel and kind of ground away uh, some of the excess epoxy and flox. Then I'll take some perfect plastic putty and smooth that in here and let it dry and sand it and make it look better. Uh, I'll do that off camera. Boring work, but it should clean up very nicely. These uh, really look good. I'm very pleased with the appearance. Um, and uh, it fits on the chassis fine. So, I'm going to put this on and show you what it looks like. Several things going on. My suspension now is really nice. Um, much better with those new oil-filled shocks in the back. And the inner fender wells look just great. I hope I can show them off on camera a little bit. Bottom view, you can see that diesel really keep a lot of uh, mud and dirt out of the inside of the vehicle. Um, looks pretty good in the back end here. Everything works. Um, just turned out very, very good. So, I'm going to end uh, this part with this. And I'll come back with part three pretty soon. So what I'm going to do is uh, just clean up these fender wells with some plastic putty, wash the body real good with soap and water, and put a little primer on it. And then I'll come back with the next video and show painting. Um, I've decided to paint it pearl white with multicolor stripes and do some Baja style lettering and numbering on it. I've still got the interior to do. I still have the engine to do. Quite a bit of work going on. It'll probably take me a couple more parts, but I am having a blast building this thing. It is really fun. It looks cute as heck. And uh, I just I just am thrilled uh, with the build so far. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. I, I just appreciate the feedback and the comments and uh, hope you'll subscribe. Uh, we'll end this now and come back with part three soon.